Story Chat with John Fornoff, the art and passion of storytelling. Here's your host, Brian Bullabush. Hello, Internet. Welcome to Story Chat, our little corner of the Internet where we sit down and discuss the art and passion of storytelling. How are you doing, John? I'm doing great, and I hope everybody is doing great out there. They're watching and listening and whatever you're doing as you're participating in this thing we're doing <laughs> so how's your projects going uh what you what you currently working on right now uh, go well just finished uh wrote a jonathan park audio drama that was a lot of fun just finished the last three pages right before the zoom meeting. <laughs> down and, to the wire uh, yeah jonathan park goes uh, hits the road with a with a big red bus and he's it's called sound the alarm so it's it's got a big shofar on top so it's it's kind of interesting story so yeah yeah it's fun it's cool. fun. just just wrapped it up just before we started so Glad to hear it. I, I need I need to listen to to more of the Jonathan Park stuff because uh, I that's that's I, you get the greats. You've got Adventures in Odyssey, uh, Focus on the Family, Radio Theater, mm -hmm. all that all that fun stuff. I need to listen to Jonathan Park. Oh, I'm a little really, a little behind on that one. Oh, it's really fun. The action adventure, a lot of fun. And Venom's good too. That's the um, the Bible adventure show. Well, I've um, I've got Brian. I've got a special guest. Uh oh, a special guest. Okay, a special guest. Not again, That's John. Right. We've talked about this. Yes, we have. Talked <laughs> about this. So uh, glad I didn't surprise you. Uh, Kenny Sargent is with us, and he's always loved great stories. And back in 2011, this uh, pursuit he had uh, it has a calling and a pursuit. It's all everything converged. And uh, 10 years later, 10,000 hours later. Uh, he runs a production company called Sargent Family Productions. I'm sure that name is somehow connected to his last name. I'm going to drill down and find that out for you, Brian. Uh, but I think th things connect to Sargent Family Productions. <laughs> he specializes in novels and immersive audiobooks for adults and older young adults. And here's his goal. He wants to bring wholesome, gritty entertainment experience to readers and listeners. He lives with his wife and his family in Colorado Springs. And it's an honor to have you with us, Kenny. Thank you. Thanks, John. It's great to be here. All right. And uh, we're gonna have a little surprise. We'd like to get like good surprises and, and bonuses and stuff like that. We like to do that for our listeners. So we've got a special thing you're going to offer us a little bit later, right? Can you give us a little preview of maybe what you're going to do? Yeah, we have uh, a couple of full cast dramatized immersive audio books that we have made in the last three or four years. And we want to make them available to your listeners uh, at 50% off. Ooh, uh, at the end wow. of this and so yeah we have a we have uh some links and a code and we hope that's a blessing for for those that like great stories yay awesome thank you thanks for doing that that's very kind yeah, so absolutely. so immersive yeah. audiobooks how does that work yeah we we uh started out as novels and then we realized we wanted to do uh, audio books, you know, the kind of the normal reality, Brian, of, of you want an audio book that goes with, with whatever you, whatever you write these days. But we, we also realized we were connected to a, a large theater community. And we thought, hmm. you know, we would really like to start doing these kind of more full cast and we want to put in music and we want to put in sound. And, and so this thing sort of emerged uh, at this point so far, it's been it's been full cast, dramatized, all music, all sound, but they're still largely unabridged, Brian. So meaning the, the narrator reads along with it. We took out all the attributions or at least most of them, things like he said or mm -hmm. this person yeah. said or whatever, but but still made it very uh, interactive, uh, very much acted out by the individual actors. And we've done that a couple of times now and it's worked really well. So That's what book? Cool. What books have you done? So the one, the first one we did was the, was my first novel. It's called Generations. So that'll be one of the ones I think we were going to play a trailer or something, or at least give the link to it at the end as part mm -hmm. of the discount. Mm -hmm. And it's a, it's a, um, if you guys want, I can tell the story of how it emerged at the beginning at some point here. Um, and it's, it's basically a mystery, uh, simple way to put it, 25 words or less. A 1960s scientist implicates himself in a murder and leaves a trail of secrets into a deadly corporate cover up. That's generations. Those who don't know history may live to see tomorrow is a kind of a play on the old, those who don't know history. So uh, that was the first one, Brian, to answer your question. And then the second one, we partnered with um, a, a well-known author named K.M. Weiland. She's known for a lot of 
uh, nonfiction related to story craft, outlining your novel and a number of different wonderful nonfiction uh, books, but she's also written some great fiction. And so we partnered with her to do uh, a gas lamp fantasy called Wayfarer, which has been a delight. And that was an interesting one, Brian, for us, because the whole thing was during COVID. So we did, we had to learn the whole remote recording, mm -hmm. do the directing over Zoom, all of the interesting things that come with that. And it was all in English accents. And so we're <laughs> We're, uh, we're not native English speakers, so God really <laughs> blessed us with a number of people to help get that very authentic, and that was that was quite uh, an undertaking in a production as well. We're very happy with how it turned out, but that one, that was our, our second one. That's awesome. We're going to play a little clip of it. Um, do we can, can you do that on your end, Kenny? You can play it on your end, or how, to, or do we, or we have a, we have, I think you sent a link to Brian to play it. Is that what it is? So oh, let, it was, let's get a setup. Let's get a setup for it. I, okay. Set up for it. Okay. R real quick. What was... Uh, tell us what, what inspired you to start this story. How, what, what inspired you? Okay, so this, uh, you're talking about the one that I did for me, the, our first one? Yeah, um, we're going to Generations first, is that right? Yes. Okay. Okay, so basically what we did was um, my sons were in a film class uh, a number of years ago, and we did a little tiny 17-minute film and all that went with that. This was in 2011. And out of that, we, we kind of had this fun little story, and we wanted to do a sequel to it. And, and I said to my son, hey, let's do a treasure hunt. And I said, what hasn't been done on a treasure hunt? And we thought, you know, I don't know if it's ever been done. Maybe it has where, where someone's on a treasure hunt in the present day and they end up being on a treasure hunt that was lost in the past. And they're on two different treasure hunts in different generations at the same time. Hmm. So that was the seed idea for this story. And then um, God really began to speak into that. And I mean, we could talk about that later if you want as well. But basically the gist of it was that became then a, a much larger, much more complicated, uh, much more interesting story uh, that, we, uh, that we then produced as this full cast audiobook. That's cool. Well, let's hear a sneak peek of it. We've got a, we've got a, a trailer's about a minute and a half, something like that. And let's, let's go for it. Brian, if you're ready. Dear Mr. Nolan, Congratulations on your wonderful victory. I'm not gonna play football in the fall. On a 6-5 decision. You got lucky. He's going nowhere. This is wrong. My father told me to beware of the Nolans. How serious are you about this being a threat? This path will likely not take you through Washington, DC. If you are alive and reading this, and myself or my coworker has been implicated as a criminal, you can know that it was plan B. Is there any way Ray Clark's death could relate to something in the present day? You understand this information wasn't exactly public domain. At this point, it's better that the official report shows this to be an accident. Do you even know what those boys were looking for? Many times the truth lurks below the surface. Ugh, I hate the dark. Is it possible that this goes all the way to the senator? It's not only possible, it's likely. I have no desire to make this into a game. You have no idea who you're dealing with. Does he have any weaknesses? He only has one. Me. I need you both to act like this conversation never happened. The game is up. You've got three minutes, maybe four at the most. It would be a shame if that box never made it back to Nolan property. Whatever it is, we don't want them to find it. Do you really want it all? Hold it together. How dare you call me after what you've done? You can try to paint this as slander. He didn't kill him. I defy anyone to try. No, I am not okay. What in the world? Where is it? Get, hurry! Go! Tell me what I need to know this instant! It's a decoy! Daddy! This isn't over, Bethany. You may not want a game, but you just got one. Generations. Wow, that's impressive. Okay, um, so so um, wow, that that's that's exciting to listen to. So um, you're telling us a little bit behind, like this whole journey into doing immersive audiobooks. How did how did it start? It started. Well, it started with the, with that first story, and, and it was originally meant to be a a sequel to a short film in a uh, in a uh, class that my boys were doing. A couple of my uh -huh. older boys were doing. That's all it was going to be. It was just going to be this thirty minute little sequel to this. And and at this time, you guys got to understand, I don't have any background in story at this point, except for that I love stories. Mm -hmm. I mean, I literally have zero. Mm -hmm. um, in fact, my friend later on said to me, he said, did you ever think you'd write a novel? And I said, no. 
And he said, why is that? And I said, I had to really think why that was because I, it never once entered my mind in 40 years of life, which that's what I was at that point at, at, in 2011. It had never entered my mind that I would run to write a novel. So I was like, why would, why didn't I do that? And the, re, the reality was I never identified as a writer. I never self-identified as someone who loves to write. I was always just someone who likes story. And I didn't realize at that time, but I've since learned you can, you can be a storyteller and not self-identify as a writer. I don't like to journal. I don't like to blog. I don't really want to do any of that stuff, but I love stories. And I didn't know that was a thing. <laughs> and, cool. and so then God really began to speak into it. You guys, this, for those that, that feel like God might be calling them to this, this is, I hope I'm a poster child for that because God actually began to whisper and then he made it super clear in the beginning of 2012, I mean, like supernaturally clear that this was going to be part of the rest of my life. Wow. And, and so that, that's where the 10,000 hours come in. I had to start taking it much more seriously and actually going after the craft and the heart of story. And so that was, that was the kind of the abridged version of how that happened, John. Wow. That's, yeah, I was looking for that. What was that spark? And you hit that. That's really good. Wow. Wow. Well, where do you think he's going to take you next? Oh, that's a good question. Uh, the, the journey is grittier than I thought. <laughs> the <journey laughs> is, there's a lot to it. I'm sure you've dealt with this some on some of your other ones. The, the writer's journey has, has a number of different uh, aspects to it. And so I actually feel like in many ways I've come out of a low ebb and I'm just barely pointing up again, uh, even though I'm about ready to, we're about, I'm about done with the third draft of the sequel. Um, and so in terms of kind of the, the things that I know are next, it's, I'm finishing the sequel. We've got one more draft, the final draft on that. It goes to my editor and some story consultants here at the end of April. Um, and so I know that one's coming as far as finishing that novel. And then I have an opportunity for, for uh, potentially an opportunity for another uh, audio drama actually coming up shortly. So those are the kind of the ones that are immediately in front of me. But then in many ways, I'm kind of resetting, John, to ask the question, okay, Lord, what is it? We're 10 years into this now with all the good, bad, and ugly of that journey. What do you have? Wow. Wow. That's exciting. I, I, how are you getting the word out there? I'm, I'm curious about that. That's always the, you know, for, for people that are, are creative, like, you know, like a lot of us are, we're creative, but on the marketing side, maybe we're a little, you know, not quite as experienced, but tell us how are you getting the, how are you getting the word out? Well, we, it, you know, that's a part of the journey too. And that, that actually for me is one of the very, very much harder parts of the journey. Mm -hmm. And so when God called me to this, that's been one of the things that I bring back before him a lot. Cause I'm like, Lord, I don't know what I'm doing on this. Um, but what I have found is he is leading. So there's a number, you know, we do different events like conference type stuff. We do, uh, we do, we've done a number of different marketing things to various channels and that kind of thing. And, and a lot of it is just that also that content is marketing where we keep going and we, you start building an email list and you, and you feed into that with your next content and those kinds of things. But the reality is it's very difficult. I find in, in a lot of this, um, mm. and, and that's a part of the journey that I don't find that in, uh, fun, but <laughs> all that to say, nobody likes <laughs> All that to say, the, the, I think the biggest thing for me, John, of the whole thing that has really emerged in the last two years, I would say, um, I've got a friend whose name is Alan Arnold. He used to run the fiction division at Thomas Nelson, and he, he, he watched um, as someone who ran, did 600 novels in a decade, so they, he knows everybody in the industry in Christian fiction, and what he observed was a number of writers with burnout and addiction and deadlines that were imposing, and they ran out of ideas and there was, a, there was all these challenges. And what, what he learned out of it was the concept of co-creating with God, oh, I love that. partnering with God. And, and that has really, that's something God gave me in the early days of this journey for me. It was that John 15, five calling without me, you can do nothing. Jesus says, but if you abide in me and I in him, you will bear much fruit. So I've really tried to have that as a center. And, but, you know, God brings up a lot along the way of what's really in my heart, fears, insecurities, uh, comparison, all of these ugly things, but also the beautiful things of partnering with him and that delightful place of storytelling from the secret place. I mm. love that. And so that's, 
whatever happens in the next 10 years, that's what I want to do, John. That's what I want. Oh, I want wow. to be in that storytelling from the secret place mm -hmm. and well, really awesome. inviting him in as a, as an active participant in the creative process. And that includes marketing. That's cool. You know, it's, it's interesting because um, it just hit me. Um, I was just studying a story and stuff and, and that, um, it, and, and what hit me was, is that, um, God, he hasn't stopped creating. Like we see the creation story and he hasn't stopped it. That, that's the first verb in the Bible is God created in the beginning. God created. And that's how he introduces himself. And, um, but he hasn't stopped creating. He's still creating through us. And that's that co-creating thing you're talking about. That's what's wonderful. Brian, you're going to ask something. I could just see it. Uh, yeah, actually, it's just kind of along that, uh, that, uh, that longer road, as you, as, as you mentioned, when it comes to the craft of actually creating a story, I know you kind of covered it a little bit with the uh, let, let God kind of be your co-pilot of writing, write with God, et cetera. Um, just, but more and more of a craft level, what is something that surprised you in just the art of storytelling was it a particular tool or uh, a, a, a theory or um, uh, what's the word not formula that's not the right word uh, technique is more of a word I'm looking for mm -hmm. that uh, kind of surprised you on the way and you've kind of leaned into it or just what what has surprised yep. you in that in that journey well, it's been uh, <laughs> one surprise after another, Brian. So let's just say that <laughs> uh, it, it, the journey itself actually reminds me of the description that E.L. Doctorow used for writing a novel. He said something to the effect of, I can't remember the exact quote, but it's like, writing a novel is like taking a long journey in a car at night with your lights on. You can never see very far in front of you, but you can make the whole journey that way. And so that's the way the journey is, I'm finding. It's that concept of, of the next thing and the next thing, and I still can't see very far. So it's been, it's been dozens and dozens of surprises, small and big. So for example, craft-wise, you know, just learning the basics of what does show, don't tell actually mean. Right. And, 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 and you, you pick that up from different places. You know, what does it mean to, to have some kind of structure that, that mimics the hero's journey or three act structure or those kinds of things. Um, there's a continuum of those who like to plot everything out and those who write by the seat of their pants. And there's this, there's this <laughs> dynamic continuum that I have found that I find myself at different places on depending where I am in the journey. I thought it was just, you were just one thing, but I think each work hmm. is different. And even in the middle of the work, it can be different. Uh, one example might be when I was first learning, I was really trying to learn from, I'm still trying to learn from story greats, but like Robert McKee was pretty interest, instrumental in my early days. And he's real big on outlining. I don't know if you guys know that, but he's mm -hmm. super big on outlining. And I tried to outline all of the first book and the middle, I just couldn't get it. And I felt a little nudge from the Lord where it was like, I needed to kind of pants my way through that instead of plotting my way through way. that. I like that word. You know what I mean? It's a I verb, right? Like you said, John, it's a verb. I needed to pants my way through <laughs> it because I couldn't, I couldn't get enough of the outline. And so for me, it became this kind of dynamic interplay in the middle of plotting and pantsing that was, plotting that and was really surprising. Plotting me. and pantsing. That's the title of today's episode. <laughs> <laughs> so that's one example of many where uh, another one would be just the people God has brought. So like, let me shout out different ones. So like uh, one example is, uh, well, John, you were one of them, but there are a number of people God has brought in different places. Mm -hmm. One example, uh, one of my editors, uh, she said, she said to me, you know, you're chickening out, don't you? And I said, what are you talking about? She said, you got a contract killer in your story. He's not really acting like one. And, and, and we had this, this discussion about, no, this needs to get grittier and still be wholesome. And so that was an example where I had this problem in a story and it took a month to solve it, Brian, but at the end of it, it got so much stronger because how do you get a protagonist away from a character who's good at his job and doesn't monologue and, and a whole new avenue of story had to emerge. Mm -hmm. So that was another example or, or just lots of little things here and there. So I find that, that God has this sort of next thing. I mean, this, this podcast is a great example. I didn't see this coming until this week, right? This, <laughs> we decided to do this this week. It's the next thing. 
So God's got this journey for me and there's lots of surprises. That's cool. That's cool. Thanks for being with us. This is, this is a lot of fun. So wait, what, why, why audio drama? Why not just the novel? What, what was the attraction to audio? Well, that goes back to the fact that we, we have a theater background in our family, at least for the last few years. Um, my son is very, well, several are pretty gifted at it. And, and so we knew we wanted to do an audio book, just again, the basic audio book. But we realized, well, wow, we have access to a lot of pretty proficient actors. They're amateur, they were amateurs at the time. We're starting to be professional now. In fact, John, you know this. We had Nato Jacobson in our Wayfair one. He's the narrator. And, did, and you were the one that introduced us to him. And yeah. he did a tremendous job. But he was really the first professional uh, that we paid. And we're going to start doing, I anticipate we will do that more. But we had access to a pretty broad amateur talent pool. And there, and we 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 loved, you know. In fact, we we we've had so much Odyssey and Father Gilbert and Narnia and Lamplighter and even Jonathan Park. I mean, you name it. We've we we sort of had that in our DNA, and we were we just did it as an experiment. Could we make it something at that kind of a quality level in our own way and do it full cast and and bring the people in that we that we know and and it was fantastic that way. That's cool. That's cool. Great starting yeah. DNA. Yeah. Great starting DNA. <laughs> it, it really was. We we really have it. it was like, go ahead. Go ahead. Bro. I was just going to say they th those audio dramas have set the bar above and beyond. I think anything that's on the market right now, and I think that that's just super cool. Yeah, we really. I mean, we have listened to them for years, Brian. We love them. We love you know. I uh, I love just the you know the whole flow of that and and so uh, yeah we we felt like we'd listened to enough to know what quality was, and then we did it as an experiment to see if we could do it. That's so cool. What's it like working with your son on this? That's a, that's a unique aspect. Yeah, no, it's great. He, uh, I mean, he's really grown a lot in the process as well. He started as a sixteen-year-old that that was gifted. Um, but didn't didn't know the specifics and he's been on this many thousand hour journey of learning the craft himself he's his name is Thomas he's a very very strong uh, sound engineer now he's got a great ear already but that's been developed and crafted and he had to learn how to direct and all this like we did with Wayfarer again so uh, it's been a delight to work with him and it's been gritty I mean these projects as you know John when, when you start to have deadlines and you and 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 just the length of it can be really tiresome. Just the length of the editing and post-production process. Brian, you get to do this one after this call, right? I mean, yeah, yeah, basically, that's, that's yeah. part of your world, right? So uh, we get that. We really do. And it took a lot. But it, it, you know, in terms of we did this with God's help, we did this. And it was delightful working with him, John. That's cool. And that's uh, Sergeant Family Productions. There you go. That's 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 pretty cool. Talk, talks about what, what you do and who you do it with. That's pretty, pretty impressive. And we had a number of our, we actually had a few of family members in it, either uh -huh. in little bit parts or my my oldest son actually was the main character and did did a great job. That's cool. um, so that was great. Oh, that's fun. Okay. Now you had, um, we talked about generations and give us a, give us a sneak peek of Wayfarer. I want to do a little trailer here with uh, Wayfarer too. Uh, talk, okay. get, give us a setup for that. What's, what's that? Okay. Yeah. So Wayfarer, it, it's a very, very different story, but mm -hmm. it's very delightful. We were, we were looking for the next project is what we were looking for. And we needed something that was consistent with our values. We wanted something wholesome, but also uh, uh, legitimately gritty and that kind of thing. And we had, uh, I had known of K.M. Wylam's work just from reading it. And so we, uh, we reached out to her and we worked out a deal and we basically partnered with her to do that. And, and it's a very different story. It's 1820s London. It's all English accents, a lot of Cockney, a lot of very high uh, Queen's English type of thing as well. And, and so uh, it's a story of, of, of a young man who basically becomes the first superhero. He has this accident that happens to him and there's the, uh, this thing and he basically gets, gets some different um, enhanced abilities, maybe is the way to say it. Mm -hmm. And so uh, then, of course, there's an, a lot of antagonism against that. And, and the antagonist ends up with different types of those from the same type of context. And so it ends up being this sort of mashup of uh, of what you might call gas lamp fantasy, which is, you know, the huh. lights of London type of thing with uh, kind of a superhero aspect, but very wholesome, still a very God honoring message all through it that's been delightful. So 
yeah, we, we really enjoyed partnering with that, uh, with her on that. And we hope that's an interesting one for people as well. I want to hear a sneak peek. I mean, I don't, let's, can, we, can we cue that up here, Brian? That'd be great to, yeah, I'm to on hear it. that. Awesome. Yeah, just do the first one on those two, I think, Brian. Share sound. Uh, that would be... And I'll edit my voice out. Okay. Yeah, this will be the Wayfarer trailer one, I think, is the one you're going to want on this one, the top cool. one. There has been a transformation here. It is a change deep in your bones, as unpredictable as aught I have ever seen. Shall I tell you what I witnessed? It was unbelievable. I want to know how it feels. Of what are you now capable? I can run on walls, even jump high enough to gain rooftops. From award-winning author K.M. Wyland, they told you what I can do? I have a, yes. And a full cast, led by narrator Nato Jacobson. What's this? I need your help. Now, I don't know. I'll pay you. Well, and I'm your man, aren't I? Comes a rip-roaring audio adventure, racing through the streets of 1820s London. You all had the blooming adventure of your twenty lives, haven't you? It's dangerous, Tom. But you're dangerous too, lad, or so I hear. Featuring cinematic music and creative sound design. This boy is a murderer! You use your newfound talents to prey upon the innocent. Ugh, what do you think? How do you do that? We must discover that together. Don't you fool, you fool, what have you done? The whole shop's gonna blow Ira Davies kite! This! All of this was your idea! You can do something here, Will. Blimey, but ain't you the one? Rise up! Fight back! May God be with us tonight! Sergeant Family Productions proudly presents <laughs> Wayfarer. Oh, blimey. <laughs> oh, that's cool. No, oh, yeah. blimey. <laughs> I love it. All right. Yeah, great. Now, uh, can, how can we how can we get these? What, what do we do now? What, tell us what to do as, as, as we're listening here. And, and Brian's going to help us out, too, with the link. Or how, how do we do mm -hmm. all this? How do, you're going to give us a, a special like half off here for these. Yeah. So, so what, do we do we, what we've done is is we have we have put them on the Awe Sound platform. I don't know if you guys have used it before, but it's really good. And the reason it's so good is it allows for fully uncompressed audio. So most of the time, like when you use Audible and stuff, like my first one's also on on uh, Audible as well but it compresses the audio down. And so you lose some of that immersiveness of it. It compresses it by a you know, factor of three or something. Whereas, so we put it out on awesound.com. And so we'll have a link to that. And the, and the benefit is we also can, we can give these kinds of things like 50% discounts, which is what we're going to give here. So we'll have a link to each of those. I think Brian, you're going to put that in the, yep, in, it'll in be, the chat it'll or something, be right? Or mm -hmm. in the comments or whatever. So, mm -hmm. yeah, so we have a, uh, a discount code. It's story chat. It'd be that simple. So I, I, I would expect you would put that in there as well. Also, mm -hmm. Brian, wouldn't you? Yeah. Okay. So they'll just be able to follow those links and, uh, and, and they can try a chapter for free on those. And if they like them, get them there. That'd be awesome. Thank you. Thank you. And then, uh, and to go to your website, what's your website? Sergeantfamilyproductions.com is one of okay. them. And the other one is generationsthestory.com. So sergeantfamilyproductions.com and generationsthestory.com. And the promo is story chat, correct? Story chat is the promo, yes, uh, on those links that I told you, yes. And Sargent is spelled? S-A-R-G-E-N-T. Right, S-A-R-G-E-N-T, sargentfamilyproductions.com. That's awesome. Great. And uh, I Oh, was, oh yeah. when, does that, when does that code expire, by the way? That code will expire uh, whenever I decide to make it expire. <laughs> <Okay. laughs> so I would say probably within two, three weeks. Okay. 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 Awesome. Yeah, so, let That's me know great. if you need it longer. All right. Will we'll do. Thank you. Anything else as we close out here? And Brian, feel free to jump in with as we wrap up here. And it's, it's been great to have you, Kenny. Thank you. Uh, anything else that uh, you talk about uh, um, your passion for story and that kind of thing? Anything else you want to say to encourage people that are out there? They're, they're pushing, they're getting, they're trying to get their story done. Anything you would like to say to them to encourage them? Yeah. I, I mean, I think. God's with you for one thing. And that really is where my bread is buttered on this, uh, mm -hmm. you know, where he's with me and he's with you. I think, John, the thing you told me not too long ago was how important even in your own journey persistence was. I don't know how much you've told that journey on this show yet. Um, mm -hmm. That's been one. 
So, you know, by the grace of God, I'm just trying to, to really invite him into the process and keep going. And so that's the thing I, I think just as a reminder, God actually is bigger. This isn't all on me. Maybe this is the final parting shot, John, is the, mm -hmm. uh, one of the things that I've observed in the last few years is how much I process life as though I don't have a heavenly father. You know, I don't, it's kind of that orphan mentality where even though I wasn't one or anything like that, we have pockets in our hearts where we, we fundamentally believe that we're alone. And so that's the thing I want to encourage people with is they're actually not alone. Not only, you know, it says at the end of the prodigal son story, son, you are always with me and all mm -hmm. that I have is yours. And, mm -hmm. and, and like in Isaiah 41, I am with you. Fear not. I am with you. Jesus said, I will be with you to the end of the age. So the Lord is with us, but we don't always recognize that. And so that's my encouragement, especially in the times when the journey doesn't make sense. Mm -hmm. I think that's my biggest encouragement because, you know, there are times when we get feedback that's hard to deal with. There are times when the sales aren't there. There are times when when we just can't see very far in front of us and we feel depressed about that fact or you know, you have to confront the empty page. I mean, you name it, there are, there are lots of obstacles, but then also just the Lord bringing his presence and keeping us going and the fire comes back the next day or the next week. And, and there's people along the journey, like you guys that want to help people and they encourage, I'm in such a privilege to be able to do this because I feel just encouraged just to be here and that God is doing something. So that's, I think, the upshot of what I would say is don't try to do it on your own, do it as a as a son or a daughter of God. That's awesome. That's awesome. As we're up, anything else, Brian, that was really good. Oh, no, that was a great yeah, way. Yeah. Great way yeah, to summarize. Great. Thank you for being here, Kenny. This is, yeah. this is awesome stuff. I want to have you check out this stuff myself. <laughs> it is good. absolutely my pleasure, you guys. Thank you so much. It's been a privilege. All right. Great to have you with us, man. Blessings. Blessings. Thank you for joining us for this episode of Story Chat. If you want to hear more, don't forget to subscribe to the podcast. If you have any questions for John or feedback on the show, please email us at storychatwithjohn at gmail.com. Thanks for listening. We'll see you next time.